And again, getting back to that uh, statistic of, uh, you know, it being the worst or the biggest killer in mm. Australia, and that statistic has been around for years. It's been the way, it's been the number one killer for a long, long time. And that includes heart attack, stroke, heart failure. It's a whole gamut of heart problems. It is complex, but it does come down to those common risk factors, diet, lack of exercise, being overweight, blood pressure and so on. That's, those risk factors really drive all of those problems. One risk factor, what you've got there, salt. Or so this good salt. <laughs> there's been a lot. It's really, it's a really a breakthrough. There's been a lot of research done over the last couple of decades showing that traditional salt, which is sodium chloride, really puts up our blood pressures, and sodium is the main driver of blood pressure. So there's been a move to take out some of the sodium and swap in potassium. And studies have just been published showing that if you swap potassium, uh, sodium for potassium then we can actually reduce blood pressure and reduce the risk of stroke and other cardiovascular problems. So this salt substitution with these potassium enriched salts is really important, something to think about. And you can see there that these potassium enriched salts are available in most supermarkets, often marketed as heart salt. Um, but there you can see one there, heart salt. And they come in a couple of different flavours, um, easily easy to get from the supermarket. And I can say they, I can't tell the difference in how they taste. Mm. Isn't it interesting though, like you go to the fish and chip shop or whatever and they pour the salt on. And, pour it on. Um, and foods that, you know, we don't even know that have salt in it. Um, we've got to do something, don't we, in terms right. of government regulation? Right. The government's been making inroads in this and we've seen bans against trans fats. We've seen regu regulation coming in around sugary drinks. And it's a stepwise thing. We have to absolutely have the buy-in of the public that will make these changes in their diet with us. But, you know, replacing sodium salt with potassium salt at a global level would be a wonderful thing. We actually saw iodized salt come in a few decades ago, which was to help with thyroid problems because mm. iodine deficiency. So that saw mm. a complete resetting of the salt market around the world. So colleagues of mine at the George Institute are actually working to see what would be involved, what would it take to change the global salt market to enrich with potassium. Wow. It's a really exciting thing and it could save many, many lives. Well, before we let you go, um, our executive producer, as you're walking in with the salt, he, um, he said, I'm not allowed to have salt. So for people that are not allowed to have salt, can they have a product? You like have to, that. there are some, because potassium itself, you have to mm -hmm. check with your GP if there's problems, mm -hmm. but for, for the overwhelming majority, it's absolutely safe. And of course, the trick is don't just pour this potassium salt on and think, oh great, I can have as much as I want. It's not the case. Replacing a bit of the sodium salt with potassium salt is the way to go. Thank you as always, Professor. Nice to see you. Thank you.